Hello, hello, my FAI Summit friends. My name is Sue Grant, and I'm delighted and honored that you can join me today. Thank you so much. As you know, a lot of our older adult clients have been struggling with feelings of loneliness and isolation and depression during the pandemic. I don't need to tell you, it's been a tough year. In order to bridge the gap when I couldn't teach group exercise classes this year, I, like many of you, have been teaching a Zoom group exercise class. Honestly, I can't tell you how many of these Zoom participants have told me that it's been the smiles and the laughter and the sense of community that has meant so much to them during this past year. For some of them, the class has been uh, the highlight of their week and sadly for others, it's been the only thing they've had to look forward to. Clearly, now more than ever, our older adults need some more fun in their lives. So with this in mind, I'm so excited to share some ideas that will help you to transform your workouts into playouts. I hope you really enjoy these ideas that will help you to add some much needed levity to your routines. One of my favorite ways to get people engaged has always been to do partner activities. But if you still need to wait a while until partners can meet in person or group can meet in person, not to worry. All of these suggestions can be done either in person or virtually, so you can apply to them to whatever format you're using these days. I do recommend, however, that you use these activities sparingly. Save them for a special treat. Do not try to do one entire class, a whole hour of all these activities. You'll blow people out of the water. And some of these activities aren't very physically demanding, so you might consider just kind of sprinkling them in as a sweet diversion in between more vigorous exercise sets. My goal is to shower you with as many ideas as I can in this short 45 minute session to help you keep your clients smiling, which will help to keep them coming back to you for more. Let's get started. This is going to be so fun. You just can't help but smile when you're playing with a balloon. One fun thing to do with balloons is wiggling. Just hold it by the knot and see how many different places you can wiggle the balloon. How far out to the side can you go? Can you go in between your legs? Can you thwack the leaves on this plant? Can you go in a circle overhead? Can you go behind you? Try the same thing with your non-dominant hand. Ooh, that's a challenge way out to the side. Again, always trying to move in three different planes of motion, rotating around behind and going all sorts of different places. Super fun and it actually does kind of get your heart rate up. Another fun thing you can do is using two balloons and holding each one by the knot. See if you can whack them together really hard. Make sure people don't hold their breath. Again, how many different places you have these dueling balloons, whack it out with each other going all around. You can hear I'm even starting to breathe a little bit with this silly and fun balloon wiggling activity. Let's ski some moguls. When you have the balloon between your knees, that's obviously a great way to strengthen the pelvic floor. An easier version is a small range of motion, or you can add a little opposing torso twist and lift your feet up a little higher. This is pretty fun and a lot harder than it looks if you ask me. There we go and you can have your arms go the opposite way if you want or the same way as your feet. It doesn't matter. There are no rules here. These are all just exercises just for fun but of course you'll be cueing breathing at the same time. Since I have you sitting here anyway with a balloon and a chair, one fun thing you can also do is to Start with the balloon between your knees, widen your stance, and see if you can catch it before it drops to the floor. There you go. So, two more ideas to do with the balloon while sitting. Stand and catch it. Toss up the balloon, see if you can catch it, and sit back down. Toss up the balloon, stand up, and see if you can catch it before they sit down. Another option with this one is to catch it and then 
See if you can bat it back and forth. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Just make sure that the chair is there when you sit back down, that you don't <laughs> end up plopping on the floor. There we go. That stand and catch it. Super fun. Tap it is next. This activity gets your client's head going up and down, which activates the vestibular system, that inner ear sense of balance that we have. If your client has some sort of vestibular issue, this may cause dizziness, so I recommend you at least start doing this exercise sitting down just for safety's sake. So you're just gonna call out on one hand or the other, start with hands for sure, and you're gonna, uh, the client is gonna tap the balloon with that hand until you change the body part. So it's right hand, right hand, good. And then if I say left hand, they'll go here, right hand, left hand. You can maybe even toss in a head, and then right hand and left hand, left hand, good. Try another head, Boop. right hand, and you get the idea. You can add in a thigh if you want. That's harder than it looks. Uh, just enjoy the tapping game. It's a great reaction game and really, really fun. Brain games are a wonderful way to get your clients laughing and smiling. However, it's really important to remind your clients that the point of these games is not to do them perfectly, but to know that mistakes are to be expected and celebrated. I always say that whenever I make a mistake, it's just another excuse to laugh. So I end up laughing a lot because I blow it all the time. But this attitude will help to free up your clients so they can enjoy these games and not stress out about doing them perfectly or worrying about making a mistake. First brain game we're gonna do is uh, antonyms. So I'm just gonna have you do a simple, go ahead and do this with me if you can, a simple step knee lift. We're gonna start off with just single step knees. Now I'm gonna get my cheat sheet list because when I do these lists, I get so excited that I, nothing comes out of my mouth, I get too tongue tied. So as you're doing your single knee lifts, I'm gonna say a word and I'm gonna ask you to say the opposite, the antonym. Okay, ready? So you're gonna say the opposite. So when I say fat, you'll say skinny. Okay, here we go. Asleep, bad, bend, below, bless, bravery. Now, if that was too easy for you doing the single knee lift, we're gonna do a little dual tasking here and we're gonna do a little pattern with our body while still doing the antonyms. The pattern is single, single, double knee lift. So it's single, single, two right knees. Again, single, single, two left knees. You got it? Single, memorize this, double. Okay, you're gonna do this single, single, double pattern and I'm gonna give you more antonyms, good luck. Hope, entrance, <laughs> forget. Guilty, long, noisy, <laughs> and new. All right, how'd you do? Again, if you made a few mistakes, that's more the chance to laugh. Antonyms are super, super fun and a great challenge. Spelling backwards is a lot harder than you might think. Let's combine some balance work with a little bit of brain game with the spelling backwards. To work on your balance, I always have a client stand next to a chair or a table or countertop for obvious reasons. Let's use your leg and an arm driver today. So you're gonna take your left leg and swing it forward and back and take your left arm and swing it along in the same direction. Now they can have their hand hovering over the chair if you want but now they're probably thinking about their balance a little bit, right? But you want their balance to be more automatic and um, unconscious. So let's have them, uh, I'm gonna ask you actually, what color shirt are you wearing right now? Spell that color forwards, easy. Now I really hope you're not wearing a turquoise shirt like me because see if you can spell the color of your shirt backwards. Spell that color backwards. Hope you're wearing red, that would be easy. Okay, take a little break, go to the other side of your chair in case that one leg is a little tired. 
Let's uh, challenge our balance on the frontal plane a little bit. This time your leg is swinging side to side. Let's have your arm go the opposite direction just for fun. So if this is too hard, they can tap their leg if you want. So now um, I'm going to ask you to think of your favorite relative. Who's your favorite relative? And what's their name? And spell their name four words. You know what's coming, right? See if you can spell their name backwards. I hope your favorite relative's name is Ed or something easy, not Gertrude. All right, got it. Spell that name backwards. Okay, all right. One more example. Let's go back to the other side and hit that transverse plane. So you can either tap your toe. You can't really see my foot, can you? Tap your toe or swing your leg. And let's have the arm driver go the same way. And now you're throwing yourself off a little bit of off balance in the transverse plane, obviously, in that rotational plane. But I don't want you to think about your balance. I want you to think about, uh, think about what you had for breakfast this morning and spell that, that food forward. And yep, you're doomed if you had eggs benedict. <laughs> but maybe you just had an egg. See if you can spell that food backwards. Good luck. Got it. Okay, take a little break. Spelling backwards. You don't obviously have to do this with balance. You can combine it with any kind of movement you want. But I really like practicing balance and adding a little distraction so that the balance becomes more automatic. Bravo, spelling backwards. The next category on your handout is called lists. Now, I like to add a little cognitive challenge, get people thinking while they're doing their exercises, but the standard way is uh, to add a cognitive challenge is to have people count backwards from 100 by sevens or threes. But to be honest, I have quite a few clients who hate math. They just despise it, so they can't stand. They get so frustrated when they try to do that counting backwards thing. So I like to come up with a customized list and say, I have a client who loves flowers, so I'll have her do an activity and ask her to name all the flowers she can think of, or all the flowers that start with A, then B, then C. So it's much more um, engaging if you can try to customize the list so let's just do a little bit example. Let's do uh, some common lunges. We're gonna start off with alternating front lunges. So you're gonna step forward. And as you know, if your knee is tender, you're not gonna step as far or as low. But let's add a little reach. So you're gonna to reach to get a little internal rotation on that forward leg. Good, with your nice tall posture. So while you're doing these alternating lunges, I'm gonna ask you to name all the things you can think of that are round, that are circular like a ball or a balloon. Keep going with circular things. Good, the more you reach over to the side, the more you're gonna turn on that, or, uh, that glute. Good, got it, more circular things. Did you run out already? That's fine. Let's do one more each to the front. Okay, let's move on to the frontal plane. So you're gonna do side lunges. Again, small if your knee is tender a little bigger and farther. And then let's add a reach to turn on that outer thigh. Now, while we're doing this, I want you to name as many ice cream flavors as you can think of. That's good, make sure your back stays nice and tall as you do this reach. There you go, ice cream flavors. Come on, this one should be pretty easy for you. Keep going with the ice cream flavors. Let's do one more each side with the side lunges. Good, all right, a little break. Gotta finish up with the transverse plane lunges. This time your foot is gonna turn out to the side wall. Easy here, a little more here. And if you put one hand on either side of your knee, you're gonna, again, really turn on those all important glutes. But I don't know about you, I wanna add a little cognitive challenge, so I'm gonna see how many red foods you can name while you're doing these transverse plane lunges. Red foods like strawberries, radishes. Keep going with red foods. There you go. How about one more each side? That's it. So I just did three categories. You obviously don't have to do these with lunges, any kind of movement that you're doing, but it's just fun to customize the list and you'll see your client will just light up with smiles. That's it for lists.
The clapping game. This game is really challenging. And this game, like any other activity, if you try it and you don't like it, then just, just throw it away. But a lot of my classes of clients really enjoy this game, but it is a big mind bender. So see if you like it. What we're gonna do is start off just by counting from one to eight together aloud. So it's one, two, you, you count two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're saying this is not hard. Don't worry, it gets worse. This time, while you're counting, you're gonna clap on beats three and beat seven. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're still saying, this is too easy, don't you worry, here it comes. Now we're gonna count backwards from eight to one with no clapping. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This time, when you count backwards though, you're gonna clap on beat six and beat four. Here we go. One, two, sorry. <laughs> Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that mistake I just made there, that was so real. Did you see me get upset? No, you just laugh. Okay, so we're gonna combine going up, counting on, clapping on three and seven, and counting down, we'll clap on six and four. So up is three and seven, down is six and four. I'll go slowly to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. So far, so good. Let's try adding a march. Holy cow. This makes it a lot tougher. I don't know why, but here we go. Same clapping. Three and seven up, six and four down. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What? Did I hear you say you want even more challenge? Okay, last but not least, see if you can do this with fast feet. Now this obviously isn't for all of your clients, but if you want fast feet, remember jiggling is mandatory with fast feet. Here we go, good luck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I better quit while I'm ahead. I hope you like the clapping game. Obviously, you can add in more claps or fewer claps. You can just go up. You can tweak it any way you want, but it's a great mind bender. Clapping game. The partner memory game is one of my all-time favorites. This one comes straight from Mindy Milray, who can make anything fun, so I hope you enjoy it as well. To be honest, this game is actually more fun when you do it in person, but if you're still working virtually, you can get away with it working virtually as well. What you're gonna do is stand a little bit away from your screen, so I encourage you to do this with me just so you can, can play around with it. Stand a little bit away from your screen, a few steps. You're gonna walk forward. We're gonna do some kind of activity in front and then walk back to your spot and then we'll add on, add on, add on activities. We're gonna both try to remember the activities as we progress. So first thing you're gonna do is walk forward, shake right and left and then walk back to your spot. Simple enough, here we go. Walk forward, shake right, shake left and walk back to your spot. Let's do that one more time so I'm sure you got it, the whole pattern down. So shake and shake and come on back. Next, after you do the shake right, left, you're gonna do one high five. Here we go from the top. So walking forward, shake, shake, high five, and come on back. Let's do that one more time. Forward, handshake, handshake, and I always wanna do a high five instead of the handshake. Okay, after the high five, you're gonna do a hip bump. So it's a hip bump, 
<laughs> and a hip bump. So let's take it from the top. Ready? So start off with a shake and shake, high five, hip bump, <laughs> hip bump, and walk back to your spot. Let's do that one more time. Start with a shake, good, and high five, and hip bump, and hip bump. Okay, walk back to your spot. Time to add on, you betcha. After the hip bump, you're gonna do a shimmy down and a shimmy up. Yeah, it smells a lot like Mindy Millray, doesn't it? She's so fun. Okay, let's put it all together. Walking forward, shake, shake, high five, hip bump, hip bump, shimmy down and shimmy up and walk back to your spot. Let's do that again, here we go. Walk forward, shake, shake, high five, hip ba, hip ba, and shimmy, and shimmy, and walk back to your spot. Okay, two more to go to add on. I'm doing each one twice so that you get it embedded because pretty soon I'm not going to cue it and you're going to have to try to remember it. So start memorizing it. After the shimmy down and shimmy up, you're going to walk back to your spot walking cool. Walking cool looks like this. So you're going to do that facing away from the screen. Okay, from the top, here we go. Walk forward, shake, shake, high five, boom, ba -da -dum. Oh, here comes the shimmy. <laughs> now walk back to your spot, cool. Walk super cool. Good, let's do that one more time. I know it's silly, it's supposed to be. Walk forward, shake, shake, high five, bada bing, bada boom. There's the shimmy and walk back, super cool. All right, one more to add on. This one, this is why it's more, this is all more fun to do if you do it live, but this one, the last activity is an elbow swing. We're gonna to have to do it virtually today. You're gonna to pretend like you're hooking left elbows with your partner, swinging them around, and then right elbows swinging around. You're just pretending, obviously, if you're doing this live, don't <laughs> swing your partner so hard that they go flying across the room. All right, let's see if we can put it all together. I'll cue you this time just because I'm feeling benevolent. Here we go, walk forward. Shake, shake, high five, hip, and a hip, and a shimmy, and a shimmy. Walk back, cool, good. Walk forward, left elbow swings, around you go, and other elbow, virtual swing. You got it all, walk back to your spot. Okay, this time, I am not gonna, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna cue it. I'm gonna do it with you, but I'm not gonna say anything. This is really hard for me, as you can imagine, to keep my mouth closed. So let's see how we do, but can, can you continue doing it with me, but I'm not gonna cue you. Here we go. spot there you go so if you do this in a class it will just be uproarious laughter because people are forgetting they're gonna forget they look they feel silly doing the shimmy or be walking cool but that's the whole point it gets people moving it gets people thinking so thank you Mindy Melray I hope you enjoy this one as much as we do the next activity is called seated fast feet but you can do this standing as well I just thought I'd Throw a couple things in here that were done seated in case you have clients that need to do seated activities. When you say the word hurry, the person is going to do fast feet like so. And when you say the word yay, they're going to go like this. So it's hurry really fast and yay. Okay, so do it with me. It's easier uh, to sit a little bit towards the front of your chair with your gorgeous tall posture, and I'm gonna do it with you to start, and then I'm not gonna do it with you, just so you have to start reacting. So ready, yay, yay, hurry, yay, hurry, 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 yay, got it. Okay, you got the idea? This time, instead of saying hurry, 
I'm going to say the number one. That means to hurry. Instead of saying yay, guess what? I'm going to say the number two. So one is hurry and two is yay. Here we go. I'll do it with you this first time. One, two, two, one, uh, one, two, uh, two, two, and one. Okay, finishing up. That was with auditory cues, obviously. Let's try the same thing with just visual cues. So hopefully you can see my finger when I hold up the number one. Yep, it's the fast feet. And if I hold up two fingers, that's the yay. So one is uh, fast feet and two fingers is the yay. I'll do it with you. The first. Actually, I'm not going to do it with you. I'm just going to hold up my finger because I think you're so smart. I know you can do this. Ready, set. You can also obviously vary any kind of movement that you do, but that's just a little example of seated fast feet. Let's play around with the seated reaction drill. If I say a type of a car, you're going to clap your feet together once. So if I say Toyota, you're going to clap your feet together once. If I say a type of a fruit, you're going to clap your hands twice. So car is one clap with your feet and fruit is two claps with a hand. Let's start off. I'm going to have my cheat sheet list because you know me, I get too wound up and I can, I get so tongue tied. I can never remember anything. So I'm going to say either a car or a fruit and you'll do either a clap with once with your foot or two claps with your hands. I'm not going to do it with you. Here we go. Toyota. Oh, I did do it with you. Banana, Apple, Ford, Tesla, Watermelon, Honda, Kiwi. Now I have a hunch that might have been a little bit too easy for you, so we're going to add a third element. If you find that your clients are struggling a little bit, don't add a third element. You can obviously change any of these movements. I just picked these out of a hat. You can also do this standing. But let's add a third movement. If I say a color, you're going to do two fast punches. So let's review. I need to review. A car is one clap with your feet. A fruit is two claps with your hands. A color is two punches. So maybe I'll try doing it with you. I'll just hold my list here. Okay, ready? Yeah, and I'll probably blow it too, so be ready for some more laughter. Blue, Chevrolet, red, BMW, pineapple, purple. Boom, boom. <laughs> okay, so far so good. Now, if that's plenty hard for your clients, leave it at that and just do one at a time. But if you want, you can try to build a little sequence, which Obviously, they have to remember what was in the sequence and remember what the activity that goes with it. So to review, car, fruit, and color. Okay, ready? I'll do this one with you. There are three in a row. So here we go. Pink, Mercedes-Benz, black. Got it? Okay, let's try. Uh, I'm not going to do this one with you, so you have no one to follow. Good luck. Four in a row. Can you remember them? Can you remember what goes with what? Here we go. Grape, Cadillac, white, blueberry. <laughs> All right. How'd you do? Remember, if you mess up, that's the whole point. The whole point is to laugh. The whole point is not to do it perfectly. All right. One more trick question. Orange. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's a fruit and a color. I'm just messing with you again. So that's it for seated reaction drill. 
Feel free to tweak this so it's just what, right for your clients. But again, emphasize the, the, the idea that it's completely expected and celebrated to make mistakes. That's where the fun comes in. Bravo. Cueless. Not to be confused with clueless. <laughs> if you teach group exercise class and your class is accustomed to following your verbal cues, you'll be surprised at how challenging and fun this exercise is. I recommend that you keep the movements very simple and I'll show you what I mean. Let's start off with a single step touch here, just going side to side with your feet. And you're gonna make up, either you can make up or you could have someone in the class decide on what kind of arm movements you're gonna do with a single step touch. So I'm just gonna keep it really basic here and just do bicep curls. So you've gotta remember now that bicep curls go with the single step touch. In a moment, we're gonna change our footwork though and we're gonna take, we're gonna take two steps side to side. So here we go, two steps to the side, another way. So it's a double step touch if you're used to that. With a double step touch, let's just do old school, traditional fly arms. So remember this, that these arms go with a double step touch. There you go, let's do, how about one more each way with a double step touch. Get ready to go back to single, single now. Do you remember the arm movements? Of course you do. And again, if you don't, <laughs> just start laughing. All right, let's do a few more singles, okay? And doubles again. It's double with the fly arms, you got it. Good, one more set of doubles each way. Great, back to single now. So we've got one more element to add. We did a single step touch. We did a double step touch with various arms. Now you're gonna take four steps side to side in a moment. Go now and go four, three, two. Switch directions, don't run into the plant. Four, three, Two, one more time with four. Again, you can make up your own arm movements. I recommend that you do, but this is what I'm doing today with the four steps. Single now, single. So if you're using music and you're used to the 32 count phrase, start off by doing each movement for maybe 16 counts or 32 counts, whatever, so they get really embedded in their memory. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker here with you just because I'm very respectful of your time. But let's review, here we go. All right, two steps, two steps, switch. One more set of double, good. Get ready, four steps, go. Four, three, two, switch directions. I'm gonna mix it up. All right, two steps, go, two steps. Got it. One more set of doubles. I'm gonna play around. Four steps, go, listen, four, three, listen up. Single here, single here, good. A few more here, there you go. Now two steps, go two steps and switch. One more set of doubles, here we go. Four steps, go, four, three, two, and switch, four, three, two, and singles here, hold the singles. Okay, so I've been cueing you and I've been doing it with you. Next, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna, I'll do the movements with you. No, pardon me, I'm not gonna do the movements with you, but I'm just gonna say how many steps you're gonna take. So I'll either say single step touch, and you've gotta remember if it's a bicep curl or a fly arms or sideways arms or a double, or a four. Here we go, so I'm gonna keep my hands behind my back, which is really hard, okay? Single here, good. Now two steps, two steps and switch. Good, double again, get ready. Four steps, go, four, did you remember? Four steps again, four, good, listen. Single here, and double, and single, hold the single, <laughs> four steps, good, and double, and, and single, hold the single, okay. So, that time I was doing the single or double or four steps with you. This time, I'm not gonna move my body, I'm just gonna stand completely still 
and all I get to do is either hold up one finger for a single step touch, two fingers, I hope you can see my fingers okay, for a double step touch, I should do it, right? Practice what you preach soon, and then four steps is four, three, two, and so on. Okay, you ready? Here we go, let's start off, I'll do it with you just for the single, so here's single, you remember the arms? Single, oh, it's so hard not to move. Good, and double, and four, and double. Okay, now I'm gonna do the hardest of all for me. I'm gonna try not uh, saying a thing and just holding up my fingers. See if you can remember the arm movements and how many steps to take. Ready, set, go. Very good, okay, you get the idea. So gauge your client, and if it's too hard with no verbal cues, then throw back those verbal cues in or go to numbers, however you wanna play with it. But you'll see people going, whoa, my mind is exploding, which is so fun. It's so good to try something new and challenge yourself so that our brains get just as fit as our bodies. Well done with cueless. Messing around with an inexpensive bouncy ball or playground ball is just so much fun and it reminds us of being kids on the playground. The first bouncy ball exercise we're going to do or activity we're going to do is cardio bounces. So you're just going to have your client or classes if you have enough balls, bounce the ball. I can't look at you, but bounce the ball and then as fast as they can, as hard as they can, you can also use a, a fit ball for this or a Swiss ball. If they keep their elbows down and really push down when it gets their triceps going, so that's cardio bounces. If you want it harder, they can do that while marching or with fast feet. It's hard to bounce the ball really fast when your feet are going. And then if you have some really coordinated clients that can do out, out, in, in, you can try that while you're bouncing the ball as fast as you can. <laughs> you just can't help, help smiling when you play around with this. So that's, whoo, that is cardio. Cardio bounces with the bouncy ball. Another entertaining way to goof around with a playground ball is thigh bounces. Now this involves a little bit of standing on one leg, a little bit of a balance challenge. So when in doubt, just play it safe and have your client or class stand, uh, standing next to a chair. But first thing you're gonna do is just start off really small and bounce the ball against the thigh. So yeah, you're standing on one leg. So be conservative to start off. And then, this is all about play, right? So mess around with it, see how you can Bounce it a little higher. <laughs> and if the ball goes flying, that's half the fun as well. Can you go faster? Ooh, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> or make sure that they're next to a chair with this one. See if they can bounce and hold. So bounce, hold. Bounce, hold. Ah! <laughs> bounce, hold. Or bounce, hold. Or try fast again. That's it. Five, four, three. I can't stop. <laughs> two, and last one. There you go. What did I say about making mistakes? You just gotta laugh. Enjoy the thigh bounces. Bouncing rhythms. Another way to spice up your workout. I've thought of a few rhythms here you could try. Make up your own, obviously. One that I was going to start off is two slow bounces and four fast. So it's slow twice, four fast, one, two, three. Go slow, four fast, four, three, two, go slow, <laughs> and fast, four, three, two. That's one idea. Or maybe you could go single, so right hand, left hand, and then two on the right, and then left hand and right hand, and two on the left. So it's right and left, now two on this side, and switch, go left and right, two on the left, Go again, go right and left and double. One more, left and right 
and double. That's one idea. Or you could go slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. With both hands, looks like this. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Again, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Last time, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. One other pattern that I thought of, and again, make up your own, but just use your imagination. This one, you're gonna be moving side to side in a double step touch. So it's two step touches one way. So when you're going to the left, you're gonna bounce two times. And when you're going to the right, you're gonna bounce three times. It's not as bad as it sounds. So we'll try it in a second here. All right, two bounces, bounce. Now three bounces, one, two, three. Again, two bounces, ha, <laughs> then three, three, two, one, it's hard. <laughs> and three, two, one. I'm having a hard time getting those three in and fast. Three, two, one. So play around with them. Again, not about being perfect. It's just goofing around with a bouncy ball. Bounce patterns. In your notes, in your handout, I talk about doing this activity using post-it notes on the floor of different colors. But I'm gonna use these colored spots today in a line here just because they show up on the camera better. You can also have the client standing in the middle of a circle of colored post-it notes or dots or in a line like this. Now in a perfect world, the client would be standing farther away from this line, but I don't have room where I'm filming today. So theoretically, they should walk forward to bounce on the spot and walk back. So start off really simple, just bounce on the yellow. Okay, this is not very exciting. Bounce on the orange, purple, whatever. But if you start making a sequence, then it starts getting fun. So I'll try a sequence of four just to see if I can remember all four. And <clears throat> the client would walk forward, bounce on all four, and then walk back. So I'll try yellow, blue, purple, green. And then walk back to the spot. So make the sequences small or large, depending on your client, obviously. And odds are your client's not gonna have a bunch of color spots at home. So the post-it notes work great, but they also might not have too many colors of colored post-it notes. That's fine as well. You can just write a big number one on if, it, if all the post-it notes are the same color, one, and then the second post-it note is two. And then you can call out the, sequ the sequence of bouncing on one, four, and seven. And they have to either go in a circle or up to the front of the line to bounce the ball on those bouncy patterns. That's it for that. Good catch. This one's guaranteed to bring some smiles. Start off pretty easy. You're just gonna have the client hold the ball, let go, and catch it. Pretty simple, but if they hold the ball and wait for a little bit longer to catch it, it gets a little more challenging to add a coordination challenge to it, see if they can have their feet go out wide when they let go. So here's simple, here's a little more, or there's a lot. So the balls are gonna go flying, guaranteed, because they'll probably miss, but we all know by now it doesn't matter if you, if you make mistakes, because that's where the smiles come in. If you don't have a bouncy ball for this one, you could also play around with the same thing using a scarf, trying to catch it before it hits the ground. And if you don't have one of these flimsy scarves, I bet you have a napkin or a dish towel at home. You can also just do this with a dish towel. Drop it, ooh, that's a little heavier. And you can try, maybe catch it with the other hand. So again, just pretend like you're eight years old and it's summer and you're trying to, trying to entertain yourself. Just, you're just making up games. So play around, other hand. You can hold it higher or do whatever you want. There it is, good catch. Medicine balls are one of my favorite all-time tools. You can move them in all different directions, forward, back, side, side, and rotating. They're versatile. There are a million things you can do with them. You could obviously change the weight to make it just right challenge for your client. And they're fun. So let's do something called step, touch, hold. What I'm gonna ask you to do is three single step touches, alternating in a row and hold on the fourth one. So it's three, 
two, now hold here, this is the basic, three, two, and hold. You got it? To make it easier, you're taking smaller steps, a little slower. To make it harder, you could add a little leap, like a skate. If your client has the balance, they can lift their leg at the end. And now if you've got a medicine ball, you might as well use it. You can toss it, toss it, and toss it up. If you toss it, if you toss it high, their head's going up and down. That'll activate that vestibular system again, so be careful with that. Toss it high, or you can toss hand to hand. And you can make the tosses small, like so, or go bigger, three, ooh, that's fun, two, or you can go with a little chop at the end and chop. So let's make a little arc and chop. Here's easy with the chop, or a little more. The ball goes higher, that's harder, but you do that. Or three, two, chop, last one three, two, and chop. So, a little cardio, a lot of balance, and a lot of fun with the medicine ball. Another way to add some pizzazz to your medicine ball workouts, and by the way, you don't need to use the medicine ball for this. You could use a bouncy ball or any kind of object that you want. Obviously, the heavier the ball, the harder it's gonna be. It's just to do some patterns. So I'll come up with two patterns for you. You could make up your own, but maybe these will give you a good launching pad to start making up your own. Let's start with one pattern where you're gonna go to the right, I'll just do it with you. So to the right, the center, the left, and center, and up, and down, and center twice. Go to the right, here it is. Right, and center, left, and center, go up, and down, and center twice. Now, if you want, you can hold the ball like I just did, or you can do a tiny little toss in each direction. So it's right and center, left and center, up and down and center twice. One more time, right and center. Yes, I bet you're smiling if you're doing it. Up and down and center twice. Great. One other idea is twice to the right, twice to the left, up and down and to the center twice. So it's to the right, <laughs> to the left, up and down and center twice. Do it again. You can hold it if you want to make it easier up and down and center, or you can do a little toss right and right and left. Go center, up and down and center twice. Just a couple ideas to get you started with some medicine ball or playground balls or whatever you're throwing around patterns. I obviously have no idea what kind of equipment you or your clients have, but I really do love using scarves. They're cheap, you can buy them online. But if you don't have a scarf, you can also get bean bags online. And if you don't wanna spend any money, I'm certain that you have some cloth napkins lying around somewhere. So just find something now that you can play along with me that you can toss and catch that won't hurt if it lands on your toe because you'll probably drop it a few times. So first thing you're gonna do with scarves, bean bags, or napkins is to just uh, toss it up and see if you can clap once before you catch it. Way too easy for you, I know you. Can you clap twice? Of course you can. Now, I'm gonna add a little balance challenge. That's why I have this chair here. The balance challenge is optional. But if you wanna put your feet in a reduced base of support, feet together is pretty tough. One foot in front of itself, that's a split stance, that's a little harder. One foot in front of the other foot, I'll turn sideways so you can see, semi-tandem, that's even harder. Slide that foot back, and you've got a full tandem, that's the toughest. Almost the toughest of all is standing on one leg. So I'm gonna, I think I'll choose a full tandem with my right leg forward, and then I'm gonna toss this scarf up and clap once. Ooh, it's a lot harder. Okay, here's my challenge to you. Toss whatever you're tossing up and see how many times you can clap before you catch it again. Ready, go. Drop whatever they're dropping, it's fine. Just try it again. 
Next, you can hold whatever you're, you're tossing. Uh, you can have your feet, I'm just gonna have my feet in regular stance, but you know you can make balance challenge out of any of these next exercises. You're gonna hold the scarf, you can't really see it, can you? You're gonna hold it up overhead, and you're gonna drop it and catch it with the same hand. Now this is pretty easy with the scarf because it's not very heavy. A little harder with a bean bag. Let's see how I do. Whoa! <laughs> Gravity works! And then you can do it if you want to try it with a cloth napkin. You have to be really fast. It's important to keep our fast twitch muscles tuned up, especially as we get older, correct? So that's a fun one. You can also try, eh, I think I'll try this with a scarf this time. You can try tossing up the scarf, but look somewhere else at a focal point while you're catching it. So I'm gonna look over there and I'm gonna see if I can toss it up and catch it, toss it up, woo, <laughs> and catch it. So that's kind of a uh, build up to the next one, which is, I'm gonna try this with a bean bag just so I can really get humble. See if you can toss up whatever you're tossing with your eyes closed. I know you're going, you're kidding. Well, do a small one to start, but I'm gonna start with a wide base of support and I'm gonna to toss it up with my eyes closed and try to catch it, toss it up. <laughs> I got lucky. <laughs> so you can try tossing it up higher. You could also do this sitting if you're not sure about their balance while sitting down, but it's fun just to play, right? Speaking of sitting down, I do recommend you do this last one sitting down at least to start because at least for me, it's pretty challenging. You're gonna put a bean bag or scarf or napkin on your foot, on the top of your foot. I hope you can stand. I better scoot back a little bit so you can see. So you're gonna put the bean bag on top of your foot, then you're gonna fling it up <laughs> and try to catch it. Try with your other foot. So it's on my shoelaces. I toss it up and catch it. You wanna see me try it standing? Okay, it could be ugly. We'll see what happens. So again, be sure you have your client standing next to a chair because they're standing on one leg, they're bending over, it's all uh, cattywampus. But put the bean bag on top of the shoelace, nice tall posture, wish me luck, toss, woo, just by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So there are just a few things you can do with whatever objects you're tossing around, a scarf, a bean bag, or a napkin. Truly fun just for fun challenges are exactly what they sound like. We're gonna do these things just for fun. First, you're gonna see how high can you fill in the blank. Now, in your notes, I tell you to do this with either a ball or a medicine ball. I'm gonna see how high I can toss this up, but my friend, this isn't my house, my friend has all these incredibly beautiful of uh, art pieces here, and I don't want to throw something up and have something come crashing down, so I'm going to use a balloon. But you're going to come down with your good posture, your good kettlebell swing. You're going to bring the ball, or in my case, the balloon, in between your legs, and then you're using your mass and momentum, see how high up you can toss it and catch it. So a nice, good kettlebell swing, how high up, woo! <laughs> can you go one more time? I'm glad I'm just using a balloon and catch it. So that's how high can you toss something. You can also use scarves and see how high you can toss the scarf up. I think I'll just do one to start. So how high can you toss the scarf up? Whoa, <laughs> it just landed in the plants. <laughs> I'm glad I'm using things that are lightweight. One more time, I'll go to the little bit more straight up. The straight up, how high, woo, <laughs> right into the camera. Or for a lot of fun, see if you can throw two scarves or two napkins up at the same time. I'm not gonna go very high to start because who knows how wild it'll get, but see if you can throw them up at the same time and catch them. Nice and high. Whoa, that's super fun. I'm gonna try to go a little higher. I'm getting braver, here we go. And both up and woo. <laughs> Error, I gotta do it one more time and then a good note. Ready, one, two, three, up, and way! She did it! So that's just for fun. It is fun on how high can you blah, blah, blah. Another variation on the just for fun challenges is how many times can you in 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever. 
So this is uh, your client racing against themselves. It's fun if you record how many times they did whatever the activity is and then do it again maybe next week or the second week and celebrate their improvement. So first in this list of how many times can you, I'm not gonna do it for 30 seconds because I know your time is valuable, but just to give you an idea, make up some sort of starting line. Obviously this is just an exercise too, but it could be any kind of starting line. And if your client has a hard time picking things up off the floor, it's how many times can they toss a scarf onto a chair in 30 seconds. So pretending you're starting the stopwatch, ready, go. So it's toss it on the chair, come back, toss it on the chair and come back. You get the idea. It's not very challenging, but really good practical to go forwards and backwards. If that's a little too easy for them, you can make it how many times can they toss something on the floor. And I'm going to use my bag here so you can see my bag. So it doesn't count unless it goes in the bag. How many times can you throw the scarf or bean bag or whatever you have in the bag on the floor and come back to your spot? So imaginary on your mark, get set, go, toss. Oh, I guess that counts. And toss. That totally counts. So one more, let's see how I do. And we'll count that one as well because I'm very liberal with myself. Okay, so that's how many times can you either toss something onto the seat of a chair or if they're able to pick things up off the floor, it's obviously a very functional, practical uh, way to practice getting things off the floor. Next, we've done this before, but not as a timed thing. It's how many times can you stand up and sit down catching a ball. Now, if you have a client that has to use their hands on the chair or hands on the thighs to stand up, don't introduce this game because they won't be able to do it and you never want your client to fail. You always want them to feel like, I did really well today, right? But if they can stand up uh, without using their hands, I'm not gonna do a whole 30 seconds, but you have to stand all the way up, toss the ball and come down. How many times can they do that? in 30 seconds. 30 seconds gets pretty long, but it's also very, very fun. Next, there's more. You're going to put the chairs like so. Pardon me for my little adjustments here. And it's how many times can you sit to stand doing using chairs that are back to back. It's pretty fun. I think I have room here. So again, I'm not going to do the whole 30 seconds, but assuming we're pretending to time it, it's on your mark, get set, go. Come around, sit on the other chair, come around. You can ask them to change directions, er, switch directions, and go back the other way. It's good for agility, lower body strength, and it's really fun. Okay, next, let's make the chairs a little bit farther apart. And this is how many times can you make a figure eight around these chairs? Now this one, you gotta be careful about safety, right? Because you don't want them tripping over the legs. And sometimes when you uh, time people, it's so fun that they get carried away. So you wanna always have safety as your number one priority. But just to demonstrate, it looks like on your mark, get set, go, you go around, <laughs> it's pretty fun, sit down, keep making your figure eight, come around, careful with your feet, but that's what you're training, is for them to be careful with their feet while they're going at a little bit at an accelerated pace. So that's another fun one of how many times can you do such and such uh, in 30 seconds, and let's see, and move the chairs out of the way. And we've done this before. How many times can you toss the scarf up? No, you did, we've, we've tossed the scarf up a few times, but we've never timed it. So if you want, you can time it for 30 seconds on your mark and set, go. One, two, three, and so on. Or you can try using two scarves. Why do I do this to myself? Because it's fun. Here we go, two scarves. How many times can you catch both scarves in 30 seconds on your mark, get set, go. 
It's a scarf and a napkin, which makes it even more tricky. And you get the idea. Or you can simply, how many times can you hold it up overhead like we did before and drop and catch it in 30 seconds. So when you mark it, set, go. One, two, and three, and so on. So you can tell it just adds a little more zest and enthusiasm when you time things. But again, there are no losers in this. It's just them playing with themselves and you all having a glorious time. Fun, fun stuff. Another way to add some zippity doo da to your routines is to see how fast your client can do something. As you know so well, it's really important to keep our fast twitch muscles tuned up because they tend to kind of fade away faster than the slow twitch muscles as we age. So these are some great activities to get people moving quickly and of course, having a great time doing so. I made up a little starting line with my very high tech exercise tube here. And this one is how fast can you start behind the starting line, go pick up one coin off the chair, come back, go pick up a second coin off the chair and so on. So you could either do this on the chair if, if they're uh, able to pick them up off the floor, that's a lot more challenging. So it's up to you. You know your clients better than anyone else, right? So it'll look like something like this. You're not gonna time them, but it's just how fast can you go forward, come back, I gotta go get another coin, and so on. I'm not gonna do all six because I'm respectful of your time, but you get the idea. Another fun how fast can you is how fast can you slam a ball or a sand bell if you have a sand bell on two different spots. Now, I'm gonna make the rule up that they have to stand up or I have to stand up fully in between, but obviously I'm just making these rules up as we go and I encourage you to do the same, but it's how fast can you slam the sand bell on the blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, orange, or you can do any sequence you want. Uh, but you have to stand up all the way in between. So it's down, up, down, up, down, stand up all the way. If you don't want them to stand up all the way, you can make that a roll and they can just go boom, boom. Ah, that's hard. <laughs> so you pick, you make up your own rules, but the heart rate es escalates right away when you add a little bit of timing to it. Finally, on how fast can you do something or other I recommend you do this one, uh, uh, have your client next to a chair because they are on one foot for a lot of the time. So putting something fairly solid in front of them, hopefully you can see that med ball and it's how fast can they tap their feet on the med ball or whatever they're tapping. If that's too easy, you can make a little pattern, maybe do that old familiar single, single, double. So it's single, single, two left, go again, single, single, two right, a single, single, a double, whatever pattern you wanna do. But you can hear, my heart rate has just increased. I'm breathing a little bit more enthusiastically. When you add a little timing element, the fast twitch muscles get tuned up and the smiles expand. The final segment in this just for fun challenges section is how hard can you do such and such? These two exercises will really help you to add some much needed power to your routines, which you know is essential for older adults. Now the first one is how hard can you throw the ball against the wall? But there's no way I'm gonna throw any ball against this wall because these beautiful art pieces would come slamming down. So I'm going to just use a balloon, pretend like I'm using a ball, but there are different uh, planes of motion you could use with these ball throws. So you can do a, um, I'm going to turn a little bit sideways to you. You're going to do a, a forward lunge and a throw overhead. A combat balloon. And you can step forward with the other leg and see how, how much emphasis, how much oomph you can use throwing the ball. You can do that little bratty throw using massive momentum, coming back down between your legs, nice flat back and throw it hard. That didn't look very hard, did it? You see if I could do it with a little more oomph. So throw it hard, no, the balloon's not going very fast. Or to add a little transverse plane, you can stand um, sideways to the wall and wind up, load to explode and throw that ball 
against the wall, or of course you want to do it the other way. Remember to load and throw that ball, or if you're cheating, using a balloon against the wall. Finally, I can do a, use a real sand bell for this. If you're using a ball for this next one is slams, it's just how hard can you slam it, which is always guaranteed to bring laughter and smiles. But if you're using a ball, careful of the rebound that doesn't come back and hit people in the face. I'm just gonna use the sand bell, so it's how hard ugh, can you slam it? If you wanna make it harder, have them come up on their toes. Grunts are always really fun. Ha, hoorah! Or you can do a rainbow slam. Again, power is so important for older adult workouts. Rainbow slam, you're gonna turn one way. Hips are down as you pick it up. Spin around and slam it hard. And that's enough slamming. That's enough of that. Super just for fun challenges. I hope you can use a few of these little nuggets with your clients and we will be moving on. That's actually all I have time for today. Sheesh, time sure flies when you're having fun, right? I had a blast putting this together for you. I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you're still looking for ways to add a little spice to your workouts, I've got two ideas for you. First, I'll be doing a free uh, FAI webinar with none other than Dan Ritchie on June 1st. Dan has bravely agreed to pretend to be one of my older adult clients during this webinar, and so we'll be doing lots of reaction games together, which <laughs> promised it to be very humbling and entertaining. I'll also be showing you lots of different activities than we did today to help add some more zest and hilarity and fun to your workouts. I'm also really excited to tell you about a new subscription library that I've put together called Fit Tips for Pros. This comprehensive library is overflowing with innovative ideas that you can use with your older adult clients. The 85 videos, I know really truly 85, <laughs> I've been busy doing this for you. 85 videos are really well organized so you can easily find creative new ways to use hand weights or body bars or medicine balls. I think you'll really love the aerobic uh, choreography that I've put together for you. Lots of partner activities, cognitive challenges, balance exercises, there's just so much to it. If you go to fittipsforpros.fit, you could watch four of these videos for free with no obligation. And if you do decide to sign up for the subscription service, there is a chunky big discount for my FAI friends like you. Check it out, I think you'll really love it. The games and things that we did today in this workshop here are just kind of the tip of the iceberg of for all the things that I have in store for you. But speaking of the things we did today, I hope that you and your clients really enjoy these activities. I hope they really help to keep your clients smiling so they keep coming back to you for more. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Please feel free to reach out to me at sue at olderwiserworkout.com. I would honestly love to hear from you and I promise to reply. Thanks again and cheers. <laughs>